Hey everybody, it's Johnny Two Face here, back with another reaction video. This time, I'm reacting to the Decemberists Part Two: Revolt Against the Czar by Epic History TV. <clears throat> now, um, if you haven't seen my reaction to Part One of um, the Decemberists, I suggest you check that reaction out before checking this one out. And um, the usual disclaimer: when I react to anything historical, if I don't show so much what is considered a proper reaction is probably obvious that I'm um, you know not very clued up about the subject at hand and if I um, if I do know anything I'll most likely pause to give to give my input or ask any curious questions which hopefully excuse me will be answered in the comments below so with that being said the link to the original video will be in the description down below please go and subscribe to Epic History TV one of the best um, history channels here on YouTube and um, yeah that's all I got to say really so um, without further ado let's get this up on screen without if I click the right button and um, let's see what happens in this one December 1825 the unexpected death of Emperor Alexander mm. has thrown Russia into confusion the line of succession had been secretly changed from his brother Constantine to a younger brother, Nicholas. As he struggles to assert his claim to the throne, a secret society of army officers prepares to make its move. Mm. Most are veterans of the wars against Napoleon. Now they want a political revolution in Russia, an end to autocratic government and the abolition of serfdom. The fate of their revolution will be decided in a single day of chaos and violence wow. on the streets of St. Petersburg. They will be known by the month of their uprising. The Decemberists. This video is sponsored by MyHeritage, the world's leading service for... Feel free to check them out 14th if you're interested. 14th December, 1825, St. Petersburg. Ugh. The Decemberists Northern Society mm. has its headquarters at the offices of the Russian American Company, where one of its key members, Relev, is a major shareholder. Decemberist leaders have been working feverishly day and night to put everything in place for a coup. Relev is the chief organizer despite being unwell. Before dawn, they learn that the new emperor has ordered all troops and officials in the capital to swear an oath of loyalty to him that morning. They must act immediately. Once the troops swear the oath, it will be too late. Most Decemberists are officers in the lifeguards regiments, stationed in St. Petersburg. They plan to tell their men that Nicholas known and disliked by the troops, is usurping the throne from his brother Constantine, to whom the soldiers swore an oath of loyalty just 17 days ago. There is no plan to involve the Russian people in their revolt. <coughs> These young aristocrats fear that this would only lead to the bloody chaos of the French Revolution. Which, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I always had this theory that, um, if um if the french revolution wasn't wasn't so extreme that um my theory is that um governments across europe and possibly the world would be more inclined to you know agree to more liberal reforms but as i said that's just a theory um i'm probably very wrong in this but it's just a theory i had i've always had I think that's the only thing that put mo I think that was the thing that mostly put other European powers off. Instead, they will rely but on I their social connections and the unquestioning trust mm. of the men under their command. They will then use these troops to seize control of the capital, the emperor, and the government. They will form three groups. The first will be led by Captain Alexander Yakubovich, 
a distinguished wow. veteran of the Caucasus War, with a reputation mm. for courage. His men will seize the Winter Palace and secure Emperor Nicholas and his family. Some Decembrists want to keep the Emperor prisoner, mm. but Rileyev secretly entrusts his assassination to 28-year-old Pyotr Kachowski, an officer recently retired due to ill health. Wow. As a cadet officer in the lifeguards Jaeger regiment, Kachowski had been demoted for rudeness, debt and laziness. Oh wow. He is a loner without friends or money, but dedicated to the cause of liberty and imagines himself a slayer of tyrants. Mm. A second detachment will be commanded by 32-year-old Colonel Alexander Bulatov, a hero of the Napoleonic Wars and Relief's childhood friend. He's recruited just a few days before the revolt, as the Decembrists seek to involve more senior officers. His unit will seize the Peter and Paul Fortress, which contains the city's arsenal and dominates the city center. Colonel Prince Sergei Trubetskoy has been appointed dictator or leader of the coup. He is another officer of proven courage from a distinguished family. He will command the main force, expected to number nearly 10,000 men, which will assemble in Senate Square. Mm. Trubitskoy will then enter the Russian Senate and demand that it issues the Decembrists' manifesto to the Russian people. The document announces the establishment of a new provisional government until elections can be held. The freedom of the press and of worship, equality before the law, the introduction of jury... Um, bit off topic, if you see me looking over, um, just making sure that, um, everything's still working on my OBS. ...trials and the abolition of serfdom and military settlements. By looking at these um, six points, in your opinion, whoever's watching this, whoever whoever's watching this, um, in your opinion, when looking at these six points, how many parallels do you see to the modern day when it comes to politi these politics? How many parallels do you see that relate to the modern day? Feel free to answer in the comments below. Two well-known and respected politicians, Nikolai Mordvinov and mm. Mikhail Speransky, would lead the new government to provide continuity and reassurance. If I am to be emperor for only one hour, I'll show myself worthy of being so. Emperor Nicholas. Shoulder. The Decembrists, drawing on their military experience, have come up with a realistic plan to seize control of the Russian capital. But almost immediately, the conspiracy begins to unravel. Wow. On a bitterly cold morning, Kachowski and Yakubovich come to Rileyev's apartments, where the Decembrists mm. have been meeting. Kachowski has lost his nerve and is no wow. longer willing to kill the Emperor. At the last minute, Yakubovich has also decided he cannot shed the blood of Russian soldiers and refuses to lead troops against the Winter Palace. Bulatov, who is supposed to lead his troops against the Peter and Paul fortress, does not even show up. The December... Would you think that's because of paranoia that Bulatov didn't show up, or was he, or did he know that he was being watched and couldn't, didn't want to be seen going towards the Decembrist HQ? Decembrists are in a race against time. Hmm. There are several guards regiments in St. Petersburg. They must win over enough of them to secure the capital before the regime understands what's going on and moves against them. But they learn that the Senate and Priobrazhensky lifeguards have already sworn the oath of loyalty to Nicholas. This painting was based on sketches made later by the Emperor himself. It shows the Priobrazhensky lifeguards 1st Battalion arriving at the Winter Palace that morning. 
It's an act of loyalty for which Nicholas will always be grateful. I can imagine so. A battalion of the Moscow Lifeguards Regiment comes over to the Decembrists' cause. Thanks to the efforts of Captains Shepin Rostovsky, Mikhail Bestuzhev, and his brother Alexander Bestuzhev. But the regime is moving much faster than expected. Mm. Officers loyal to Nicholas, now aware of the unfolding coup, arrange for the Ismailovsky, Semyonovsky, and Pavlovsky lifeguards regiments, and the lifeguards horse regiment, to swear the oath to Nicholas. I'm pretty sure that there has to be spies that made um, Nick, um, Emperor Nicholas and the Senate quick, more quickly aware to the Decembrist um, plans, because it had to be plenty of spies to for them to move this quickly. But again, could be wrong. 700 men of the Moscow Lifeguards Regiment leave their barracks and march through the icy streets to Senate Square. Their rallying cry is, for Konstantin and Constitution. The men of the Moscow Lifeguards Regiment take position in Senate Square, near the famous bronze statue of Peter the Great. They are joined by several Decembrist leaders, including Rilev and Kachovsky. Captain Alexander Bestuzhev ostentatiously sharpens his sabre on the base of the statue. Officers and men look resplendent in full dress uniform. But Trubitskoy, the leader of the coup who is to present the Decembrist manifesto to the Senate, is nowhere to be seen. And the members of the Senate have already gone home. Wow. Relief leaves to find him. Mm. Already dis Crowds of spectators already losing strong leadership. To begin to gather around Senate Square. The general mood is one of support for the Decembrists. Mm. This watercolour was painted by Karl Ivanovich Kolman, an eyewitness, and is considered one of the most realistic depictions of the day. Around noon, Count Mikhail Miloradovich, oh, wow. Governor General of St. Petersburg and a famous war hero, arrives in the square. He rides straight up to the Moscow Lifeguards Regiment and asks, Who among you was with me at Kulm, Lutzen and Bautzen? Recalling the great battles against Napoleon. He tells the men they have been lied to, that Constantine has renounced the throne and they must swear the oath to Nicholas. In Trubitskoy's absence, mm. Lieutenant Prince Eugen Abelensky becomes de facto leader of the Decembrists in Senate Square. He tells Miloradovich to leave, but the general ignores him. Abelensky tries to prick the general's horse with a bayonet to drive him away, mm. but accidentally stabs the general. Wow. Then Pyotr Kachovsky steps forward and shoots Miloradovich at point-blank range. The general, mortally wounded, is carried away by his horse. The lifeguards, grenadier regiment, and sailors of the guard declare for the Decembrists. Mm. They join the Moscow lifeguards in Senate Square. The Decembrists are gathering a powerful, disciplined force of 3,000 troops in the heart of the Russian capital. But Trubitskoy has still not appeared, and there is little leadership. They stand and wait in the freezing cold, while the Emperor begins to mobilize his own forces. Unbeknownst to the men in Senate Square, Prince Sergei Trubitskoy had given up all hope of success early that morning, as soon as he heard that the Senate had sworn its oath to Nicholas. Possibly suffering some form of breakdown, he wanders around the city, at one point passing by Senate Square itself. Mm. His brilliant military record makes such behaviour difficult to mm. understand. A Decembrist later recalled, his absence had a decisive influence upon us and the soldiers too, for with few epaulets and no military titles, no one dared take command. Wow. Relief, meanwhile, exhausted and sick, 
spends the day in a futile search for Trubitskoy, before he is forced to retire to bed. The crowd is now several thousand strong, and their loyalties clearly lie with the Decembrists. Some policemen and patrols are even attacked by civilians. When Emperor Nicholas arrives, he and his entourage are pelted with sticks and stones. But guards' units loyal to the government are arriving at Senate Square in force, and take up positions surrounding the rebels. Soon they outnumber the Decembrists three to one, though not all are willing to fire on their comrades. In fact, Isaac's bridge is deliberately obstructed by troops of the Finnish Lifeguards Regiment, whose sympathies lie with the Decembrists. Others, such as General Orlov, are outraged by the Decembrists' actions. He orders his guards' cavalry to charge the rebels. His men are pelted with stones and timber thrown by the crowd, and the rebels stand firm. Some shots are fired, a few men are hit, and the cavalry... Well, kind of daft them to charge when they're in a huge square formation, though. They withdraw. Several cavalry charges are made that afternoon, with no decisive outcome, and just a handful of casualties. Mm. Still, no Decembrist officer takes charge of the situation. There seems to be no plan at all. It is minus 10 Celsius, and their men have been standing motionless for hours. The commander of the Lifeguards Grenadier Regiment, Colonel Nikolai Stürler, arrives to order his men back to barracks. Kachowski shoots him, inflicting another fatal wound. The Metropolitan Bishops of St. Petersburg and Kiev approach the troops and tell them it is their Christian duty to swear the oath to Nicholas. But they are mocked and chased away. The Emperor is deeply alarmed by the situation in Senate Square, though many comment on his calm demeanour. He later confides to his younger brother, the most amazing thing about this story is that you and I were not shot. Mm. The short winter day is ending. Nicholas fears that if the standoff continues into the night, the crowds will turn hostile. He now has 32 guns of the Guards' artillery at his disposal. He sends General Sukozanet to tell the rebels to lay down their arms, or they will be fired upon. It's a bad choice of emissary. Hmm. Sukozanet is despised by the troops. They tell him to get lost. As dusk falls, oh, the guns are wheeled forward. The first volley is blank rounds. The next is fired over the heads of the rebel troops, but hits several people in the crowd. The troops stand firm. The next volley of grape shot is Ooh. fired directly into their packed ranks. Scores go down. Under this murderous fire, the troops break ranks and head out onto the frozen Neva River. Mikhail Bestuzhev tries to organize them for an attack on the Peter and Paul fortress, little more than a thousand meters away across the ice. But as they form up, they come under more artillery fire. Cannonballs smash the ice. Many drown. The rest escape as best they can. After a standoff lasting several hours, the military revolt has been ruthlessly crushed by Russia's new emperor. Boy, the official the death toll is just 80. Eyewitnesses claim it is much higher. I would believe that it's much higher. But I can't help but think, like, what would happen if the Decembrists actually, actually succeeded? Like, how... How much... How much would it make? How much of a difference would it made into Russia, Russia into the modern era, if the Decembrists succeeded? 
The Decembrist leaders, who all survived the bloodshed in Senate Square, are rounded up and arrested that night and the following day. The Decembrist uprising in St. Petersburg is over. The revolt in the south has yet to begin. Okay. Half measures achieve nothing. I want to clear out the whole house. Thirteenth December, eighteen twenty five. Tolchin, Ukraine. The day before the St. Petersburg Revolt, Pavel Pestel, leading figure of the Southern Society, is denounced by one of his officers and arrested. The Southern Society's plans for an uprising are thrown into chaos. Sergei Muraviov Apostol takes over as leader. He receives news of the disastrous uprising in St. Petersburg but decides to go ahead with the planned rising in the south. On the 29th of December, he is arrested himself, but quickly freed by fellow officers. The next day, he leads two companies of the 29th Chernigov Regiment into Vasilkov, where they seize money, weapons, ammunition and supplies. Three more companies, more than 400 men, join wow. the rebels. The next morning, a revolutionary manifesto, written by Muraviov Apostol and Lieutenant Mikhail bestuzhev ryumin is read out to the troops. In the question and answer form of a religious catechism, the document calls for an uprising to end autocracy, serfdom mm. and conscription. Question. What does our holy law order the Russian people and army to do? Answer to repent of our lengthy servitude mm. and stand against tyranny and wickedness, vowing that in heaven and on earth there shall be only one emperor, Jesus Christ. Okay. By the 1st of January, Muraviev Apostol leads a force of 17 officers and 1,100 men. He attempts to march on Zhitomir to link up with units of the 8th Infantry Division, whose officers are sympathetic to the Decembrist cause. But his route is blocked by government forces. Then, on the 3rd of January, at Ustimovka, his force is intercepted by troops under General Geismar. Muraviev Apostol hopes the opposing troops will join him. Instead, they open fire with grape shot. Ugh. Then the Hussars oh. charge. A few men are killed, but most quickly surrender. 895 men and six officers are taken prisoner, including Muraviev Apostol, who is badly wounded. His brother, Ippolit, and another Decembrist officer, Anastasi Kuzmin, take their own lives to avoid capture. Wow. The Decembrist uprising in the south is over. Crushed in just five days. My horse were in a few words. I love my farm passion. I desired it with happiness and zeal. In St. Petersburg. The Decembrist leaders are interrogated by Emperor Nicholas in person, mm. before they are sent to the Peter and Paul fortress. The Emperor gives instructions on how each prisoner is to be treated, whether they are to be kept in shackles and treated severely or more gently. He despises them all. Mm. Trubitskoy he describes as a repellent example of an ungrateful scoundrel. Mm. Nicholas sets up a commission. A sentiment that most monarchies ha monarchies would have towards rebels. To investigate the plot and its origins. 579 suspects are arrested and subjected to repeated interrogations, long periods of solitary confinement, hunger and cold, or feigned sympathy. Many confess freely, revealing details of secret societies and names of co-conspirators. A few resist defiantly. 
Colonel Bulatov, who was to have led the attack on the Peter and Paul fortress, is so racked by guilt that he kills himself in his cell. Wow. There are no trials as such. Five months later, the commission returns its verdicts to the Emperor. 290 are acquitted, 289 are guilty, with 121 judged to be the greatest offenders. A supreme criminal court is formed to carry out sentencing, according to 11 categories of guilt. Devised by Mikhail Speransky, the man the Decemberists had hoped. Hang on, just gotta go to it, be right back. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> Badly timed toilet break. Would lead their new government. Mm, that's what they're hoping. Those found guilty of minor crimes are demoted and mm. sent to fight in Russia's long running war in wow. the Caucasus, along with the regiments that joined the Decemberists. Mm. 31 of the Decemberists found guilty of the most serious crimes, conspiracy, rebellion, desiring the Emperor's death, mm. are to be executed by beheading. Wow. But Nicholas shows mercy and commutes their sentence to hard labor for life in Siberia. It's worked for the Russians for centuries. Got a problem? Dump it in Siberia. Before they depart, officers are stripped of their rank and noble privileges and ceremonially disgraced. Their greatcoats are burned, their swords snapped in half. Mm. This is the punishment handed out to Nikita Muravyov, who drafted the Northern Society's constitution for a new liberal Russia. And to Prince Sergei Trubetskoy, the Decemberists' vanishing leader, whose life is only spared because of his family name. Five Decemberists will not be spared. Oh, I can imagine. Pyotr Kachowski, Sergei Muraviov Apostol, Mikhail Bestuzhev Ryumin, Pavel Pestel, hmm. and Kondraty Rolev. A public death for the chief instigators and conspirators will be their lawful revenge for disturbing the public hmm. peace, Nicholas writes to members of the commission. All five are sentenced to death by quartering. Ooh. A brutal punishment involving public dismemberment. Mm. God and the Sovereign have... For those who don't know what quartering is, it's basically... Uh, basically... Cutting off two legs, both your arms, and then probably end with chopping off your head. But there's different... There's different um, variations of quartering, so... Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments about that. ...have decided my fate. I mm. must die, and die a shameful death, Rilev writes in a final mm. letter to his wife. Pray to God for my soul. Tactics of revolution may be something in two words. To dare if we come to grief for failure, serve as a lesson for those who come after us. Kondraty Rovuliev. The legacy. 13th July, 1826. Nicholas commutes the sentence to hanging. Mm. But the execution of the five Decemberists by the ramparts of the Peter and Paul fortress is badly botched. As the men are hanged, ropes break, and three men fall to the ground. Mm. What a miserable country. They can't even hang us properly, wow. remarks one survivor. Spectators appeal for mercy. According to tradition, a man who survives a hanging should be spared. Instead, more rope is found, and the second time, there is no mistake. Mm. More than 80 Decemberists were eventually sent to Siberia. A few were accompanied by their wives, who voluntarily renounced their own noble privileges to mm. be with their husbands. 
conditions in Siberia were not as extreme as might be imagined. Mm. Their hard labour was mostly farm work. Wealthy prisoners were sent money from home, which they used to buy supplies. Mm. For active young men, boredom was the greatest enemy. Wow. They took up hobbies, played chess, painted. These watercolours were painted by Nikolai Bestuzhev, who mm. on the 14th had led the Imperial Guard sailors to Senate Square. Some formed their own academy, sharing their knowledge and going on to teach local children and set up schools. Mm. Wow. They remained hopeful of a pardon, but it proved a 30-year wait. Mm. Only in 1856, after the death of Emperor Nicholas, was an amnesty announced for surviving Decembrists. Mm. Among them, Prince Sergei Trubetskoy, who returned to Russia and is seen here, photographed in 1857. Wow. The Decembrist <coughs> uprising seemed to have been a total failure. Mm. A wildly optimistic operation, poorly planned, chaotically executed, doomed from the beginning. Mm. The loss of life, thoughtless and unnecessary. But the Decembrists had mounted the first organised political revolt in Russian history. As such, their impact would prove far-reaching. The recent conspiracy, wrote the British resident minister in St Petersburg, failed from want of management and want of a head to direct it, and was too premature to answer any good purpose. But I think the seeds are sown, which mm. one day must produce important consequences. Emperor Nicholas was never interested in reform. The issues of serfdom and... As the story with, with um, most Russian leaders throughout their history, which I'm not saying that I'm not saying that to be spiteful, but it's true. If you've ever, um, ever seen um, uh, Epic History TV's um, series about the history of Russia, you'll know what I just said was true. I think it was, um, oh, I think it was Alexander II, who was, if he wasn't assassinated, he would have brought reform. That's what was said anyway and a constitution would be around for decades to come. Mm. For those who took up the cause of reform, including Russia's liberal intelligentsia and future revolutionaries, the Decembrists were an inspiring example of action in the face mm. of tyranny. The father of Russian socialism, Alexander Gertsen, was their great champion. He named his political journal Polar Star after Rilev's own. On the cover of its first edition, the five Decembrist martyrs. No. In time, the Decembrists' aims, the abolition of serfdom, a constitution, even the overthrow of the Tsar, were achieved. But their brand of 19th century liberalism was soon overtaken by events in Russia. Mm. The Communists never completely approved of the aristocratic Decembrists, though in 1925 they did allow Senate Square to be renamed Decembrist Square to mark the 100th anniversary of the Rising. But the Decembrists' place in Russian history remains highly contested to this day. Mm. A 2019 Russian blockbuster film was accused of trivialising the Decembrists and their aims. Others called for the film to be shown in schools. While in 2008, the St. Petersburg Square, where the Decembrists made their famous stand, was renamed again, back to Senate Square. Mm. The Decembrists continue to serve as a warning to some, an inspiration to others. All that is certain is the Decembrists have not been consigned to history just yet. Mm. Thank you to all the Epic History TV Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. And um, that'll do it. This being another interesting video um, and two-part 
two-part series of um, Epic History TVs about the December. So um, if you like this reaction, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next.